Howdy, Jubal Kane again. In this video I'm going to discuss uh, using taps and how to tap straight into your work. It's very easy to tap a crooked hole and tapping a crooked hole also is one of the leading causes of tap breakage. So here's a, uh, a piece that I have tapped crooked. I did this on purpose but uh, notice when I hold a square up to it that uh, we're off considerably. Even though you have drilled a straight hole, it's possible to tap it crooked by uh, just being careless. <clears throat> so here's some suggestions on how to tap straight. Firstly, if at all possible, try to drill your holes on the drill press rather than with a hand drill because it's pretty hard to drill a straight hole with a hand drill, but there are some cases where you're uh, working on machinery or something out of doors and, and uh, you're going to have to do it by hand, but uh, we're presuming here that you're able to uh, tap it, or drill it rather on a drill press in your shop. But when you do drill your hole, I would then try to use a tapered tap. Now a tapered tap, this was discussed in one of the other videos, but here's examples of uh, a tapered tap and then again a plug tap. Taper taps always have about seven tapered teeth as opposed to a plug tap which has three or four. So use a tapered tap if you possibly can. Now when you go to the store, you go to a big box store, you ask the girl with a tattoo if you can, uh, she can show you a tapered tap. Well, first of all, she won't know what a tap is and certainly won't know what a tapered tap is and she'll be exasperated because she's in really wanting to do some texting. She will have no idea, or he, if that sounds sexist. The taper taps generally you have to buy from an industrial supplier. In a store, they're just going to have uh, plug taps because they don't want to stock that many uh, different tools. So use the taper tap and it is easier to tap straight. Now this next method is probably the method you're going to use the most often. I simply call it the sighting method and you can use a T-handle tap wrench or a straight wrench whatever your preference is and it's handy if you got a little square. You don't have to use that but uh, when you're first practicing it might help. Now what you want to do is uh, when you're tapping and we'll, we'll use uh, this character here, I think this is the Joker, he's getting ready to tap. And you want to look at it both from this direction to see that you're straight up and down and your eye is pretty accurate. Or you can come over and look at it from this direction. So I constantly move my, uh, my body and my head from uh, in a 90 degree position so I'm looking at it in both ways because you can go crooked in two directions. So here we've got a nice taper tap, 5 16 18, and I've already drilled a quarter inch hole. And get her started. You gotta push a little bit to get her started. And turn it in one or two turns. And then sight it from this direction. And then also from this direction, and you can double check it if you want with your square to see that you're reasonably square. Now if you're only, you're just barely starting this thing and you're in one or two threads, you can still correct it. However, once you get in there all the way and you try to straighten the tap, you will probably break the tap or greatly enlarge the hole. Always turn about one turn and then back it off. This is hot roll steel, so it's kind of tough steel. And then continue tapping all the way through till you go past the tapered teeth. That's the sighting method. This next method I'm going to call the counter boring method. I came across this myself over years of experience. I don't know if this has ever uh, in any books or anything like that, but I'm going to tap this again 5 16 18 and the tap drill size is quarter inch So I've drilled quarter inch all the way through. This is aluminum And then I counter bore it 
or use the clearance size which is 5 16 and I re-drilled it and I went approximately halfway through. Can you see that? Now that will help the tap start straight. You provided a guide for it I guess you could say. That will in no way on thicker stock like this affect the strength of the thread. In fact here is a standard 5 16 thread and any thickness greater than that is not helping you at all. And make, it is not making the thread stronger. So you can see on a piece of stock like this we can drill, we can counterboard about halfway through and it will greatly help you. Steel or aluminum it doesn't matter. Now if it's real thick stock I mean really thick like this you know, I think that's about inch and a quarter thick. You definitely want to do that. Don't try to trap tap the full thickness of it or you'll break a tap and it does not make the thread any stronger. Now we'll tap this piece of aluminum 5 16 and it's been counterboard and watch how easy it is to, to, uh, to make it go straight. That counterbore is acting as a guide. and it's just slick as a whistle. That's one of my favorite methods. And I would tap all the way through to the end of the thread. The next method I wanted to show you was the tap handle level. And these are little bullseye levels that attach by a magnet onto your tap wrenches and they come two in a set, two different sizes. And these are made by a firm called Edge Technology and they've got a little catalog here with a bunch of neat machine shop accessories so you can send for that or you can look on uh, eBay and they have their products on there but the website is edgetechnologyproducts.com and here is the set of uh, bullseye levels and they attach by a magnet right onto the tap wrench and then there's a smaller one for your smaller wrenches. And they got the little logo on there. So let's take a look at how to use them. When you use these tap handle levels, make sure that your vise is level in both directions. So we got it pretty well level this direction. And then uh, if you would put a piece of uh, material in the vise of any size like this. You could also put your level on it like this to double check that you are level in that direction as well. Or when you attach your work to the vise, make sure that that is level. And if you can adjust your work a little bit if it's off level. until you get that bubble right on. Otherwise you get a false reading. So make sure you do that first. Okay, let's tap a piece of aluminum here, 5 16 18, and we've got the little level with the magnet held onto the tap wrench, and I'm looking down here, or the joker would be looking down like this now at the bubble level. And all we have to do is keep the, the bubble centered, and we're going to be perfectly straight. And that works slicker than a whistle. Let's take a close-up look of the level. And the bullseye is right in the middle. The directions do not show this, but I don't see any reason why you can't use it on a regular tap handle as well. If you've got a level or a tap wrench that is perfectly flat on the top and is not rounded or irregular but this one is quite flat here where the jaws are so I'm going to lay the little bullseye level on there right in the center and continue tapping that hole which I hadn't quite finished. Or 
aluminum so it's very soft and easy to tap. Slicker than the whistle. Again, that's by Edge Technology. Here's a neat tool. You'll find this in all of the uh, machinist catalogs. It's a tapping guide. There's no manufacturer's name on this. I'm not sure where I got it, but got a quarter twenty tap mounted in basically a tap wrench with this sleeve on it and it fits inside the other part which guides it. On the bottom it's true and flat and then there's also a V in here for round stock. I've got a quarter, we're going to tap quarter 20 so I've got a 13 64th hole there. So let's give this a try. I'm going to hold this down tightly on the work, trying to not let it deflect. And continuing through and completing the thread. That's a pretty neat device, but your work has to be large enough to accommodate the diameter here, which is about an inch and a half. Now we will tap a hole in a round stock. Again, quarter twenty. I drilled it thirteen sixty fourths. Now it won't work if it's too close to the edge. So it has to be a hole that is somewhat in from the end. I drilled those holes using a drill jig so I know them to be accurate holes that go right through the center and pretty much the same as the other piece but we'll, we'll line up the V with the round stock and I'm sighting it from this direction from this direction So on round sock, it still does require a little bit of the sighting method. And that's a good way to tap straight into round stock. Now let's call this next method the guide block method. And you can buy these commercially, but I made this one. It's just a piece of round stock, but it could be square stock or flat stock. And drill a clearance hole in there that will accommodate the tap size and in this case it's quarter twenty tap so I have drilled a quarter inch hole and you could drill a series of holes around here and that's why I put that uh, that groove around there if I want to make more and then this needs to be true on both sides and then also make sure that your work is true that you filed burrs off and with this method we just lay that on the work I'm going to put a little, this is hot roll steel, it's tough tapping. Just put that through the hole in the guide block and this will tend to hold it perpendicular if you don't let it rock too much. Not a perfect method, that also could be C-clamped on there if, uh, if you have room for a C-clamp and that will help you to tap perfectly straight or perpendicular however you want to put it. So there are about six methods that I have shown you. There are probably many more but these are the methods that I use. This is a page out of the ENCO catalog and uh, everybody sells one of these. It's called a hand tapping machine and you put your pre-drilled work on the little table there and your tap mounted into this uh, bar here. There's a tap wrench on the end of it and this will move up and down and allow it will hold the tap perfectly perpendicular with the work. But as you can see those are $250 and that's probably not something you're going to see in a home shop but many uh, commercial shops have these. 
I must be a pack rat. I didn't realize I had this many tap wrenches. And this doesn't include what's out in the garage and it's, which is on the bench that I just showed you. And the large tap wrenches are over on a shelf for the ones that are two foot long. But I suppose you can have too many of them, but I like my tools. Well, that concludes this portion of the tapping video. The next half will be tapping on the drill press and how you can tap straight holes after you have drilled a hole on the drill press. So stay tuned for that in the next video. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for today.